Good afternoon, everybody. Once again, Brian Newber here from goldenblack.com. Where else but home? Um, this will be day three of our potentially daily uh, goldenblack.com simulcasts. Um, we're going to just start calling them the daily quarantine. Uh, that sounds a lot better. Uh, we tried to get a little cute with the name uh, the first couple days. Not wasn't crazy about it, so we're just going to go with the goldenblack.com daily quarantine um, simulcast. It's a simulcast because you're watching me talk right now. Some of you will be listening to me talk because I'm capturing the audio and I'm going to post it as a uh, podcast on our typical Golden Black Radio um, platform as well. Uh, but basically what we're doing here is just a little bit of Purdue talk for the day uh, to hopefully get um, help get everyone through this time that is obviously challenging all of us. Uh, so I'm just going to pick a Purdue topic either every day or on a pretty close to regular basis and just talk. And uh, hopefully it entertains you. Hopefully it gives you something to buy the time, whatever it may be. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is brought to you by our uh, sponsors. Once again, uh, Follett's Purdue Bookstores, Purdue Federal Credit Union, the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant, First Source Bank, East End Grill, and the Chargers Team Remax Ability Plus. I know I'm not supposed to touch my face. My apologies. Um, wanted to remind you, um, Regarding our sponsors, the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant is open for carryout orders, as are our longtime friends of the family, Arnie's and Bruno's uh, in West Lafayette uh, and Lafayette. Uh, just want to keep reminding you to please keep them in mind um, when you're looking for carryout, when you're looking to support our local businesses, whatever it may be, you can kill two birds with one stone um, and you can help us support people who've been really good uh, to us over the years. Today's topic relative to Purdue, uh, just kind of scribbled a couple things down here. Just talk about recruiting a little bit um, in regards to what this quiet period that I have to stop calling a moratorium because I'm told it sounds way too morbid um, means for recruiting. Uh, it kind of remains to be seen. Uh, this is sort of unprecedented uh, in probably the history of college sports, certainly in uh, modern recruiting times. Um, but basketball, I think, is the, of the two major sports, being basketball and football, obviously, I think basketball is the one where things are much more different uh, because of this. Obviously, there will be no spring uh, recruiting here. Uh, it, it's a very important time for coaches to get out. It's another, it's another kind of evaluation period before school comes out. Coaches ordinarily would be going into schools, watching open gyms, whatever it might be. Uh, coaches could start doing in-home visits pretty soon. I'm not sure quite yet, but pretty soon nonetheless. Um, there is still a window for junior year official visits now that is now off. Uh, I can only imagine. Um, I think the impact for Purdue there is I think had that still been in place, Purdue might have been able to get a junior year official visit from Max Christie, the five-star guard from Chicago. I'm not dead certain about that, but I think that's the one, the only possibility for a visit to campus that Purdue would have would have lost out on here uh, because of this. Um, there will not be an evaluation period uh, this April, which is really significant. I think it's significant. More for the guys who don't necessarily have their offers yet. I think junior college players are in a real pickle here um, because this is their time of year. Um, but also, I think the graduate transfer recruiting wire is going to be really unconventional this year. Not that that's not a clown show in the first place. Um, but not having a spring evaluation period is, um, is pretty significant because that's obviously... Uh, the time of year when coaches go out to all the grassroots events that one weekend they now have in April. Uh, a lot of offers are extended then. A lot of kids are seen for the first time. Uh, a lot of guys kind of get their names out there then. But also a lot of guys get noticed then and then recruited even more seriously thereafter and into July. And that's kind of where the process starts for a lot of guys. I cover Purdue, so I tend to cover a lot of guys that the school I cover starts recruiting as freshmen and sophomores. So Purdue doesn't necessarily always go into April having no idea who it's going to recruit. So it might not be that big a deal for, for Purdue as much as it is for smaller schools, uh, schools with a lot of scholarships to offer, things like that. But that is going to be, uh, you know, that's obviously an important part of the recruiting calendar that will be 
no more. Uh, what the NCAA does, I have no idea. I don't know if there's anything they can do to add on some evaluation opportunities in July. You would have to have those, those, those kind of events organized by now uh, to be able to know whether or not you can let coaches go to them. Also, we're taking it for granted there's going to be a July. Obviously, this is kind of a day-to-day -day deal for all of us here. Nobody quite knows when some measure of normalcy is going to return here. So expecting there to be a traditional July this year is probably uh, expecting an awful lot um, because we just don't know at this point. Uh, but not having a spring evaluation period at the very least is obviously a very significant change in the calendar. Um, switching to football here, uh, you know, football, I don't know how big of a deal this necessarily is for football, assuming normalcy does return at some point in the near future. Um, spring is a big time for unofficial visits. Um, everything in football recruiting nowadays moves so much faster than it did five years ago. June has already become the new December and January. It won't be long before April becomes the new June. It's just going that way. It's going the way of basketball recruiting, which is probably not the healthiest thing in the world, but that's just the way of the world. Um, this is a very important time typically to get guys on campus for unofficial visits, A, to recruit them, potentially get them, but also in some cases for the really high-end guys to, to kind of jockey for position to get those those June, uh, June official visits. Um, so th this is a pretty important time on the calendar for, for unofficial visits. Purdue did get a really big junior day in uh, before this quiet period took hold. It lost out on a lot of March visits, I'm quite certain. It lost out on a lot of April visits. But again, this is this is is the condition on the ground for everybody. So I don't know if anybody really has an advantage necessarily. If normalcy does return in, in time for June, everything's fine. Um, because June, again, is when the majority of these guys now who are going to sign early in December are going to take their official visits. A lot of them are going to commit. You know, Purdue the last couple of years is a good example. They've had the majority of the recruiting classes in place uh, by the start of September. I shouldn't say the majority, probably at least half. Um, so if June, as we know it, takes place this year, I don't know if you really feel much effect. The big thing, too, though, is as things get get moving faster and faster in football recruiting, you did kind of wonder if these guys can't take visits, are they just going to say to hell with it and make a commitment? I don't know if you're necessarily seeing that all over the place. Ohio State went on a little bit of run, a little bit of a run of commitments there. Uh, Purdue got what seemed at the time like a pretty a pretty abrupt commitment from uh, the cornerback from Georgia uh, not too long ago, Brandon Calloway. Um, but I, I don't see any sort of mass movement right now around the country where because kids can't take visits right now or because they're panicking about, you know, not being able to go to camps or anything like that. They're just they're just go ahead, going ahead and committing. I, I just I don't see that yet. Um, and if it's not happened yet, it might not. Um, but as I said before, if things if things return to normal in June, camps can take place as they normally would. Official visits can take place as normally would everything's right back on track. So I don't think it's as big a deal necessarily in football as it is in basketball. Uh, I do think both Purdue basketball and both and Purdue football in, in some very, very modest ways can kind of benefit from this, uh, if anybody can. And that's because I think in basketball, you know, Purdue only has two scholarships to fill for its 2021 class. It will probably take three. It will almost certainly take three. Even if there's not a third scholarship available, I think Purdue will oversign in that class because I just think that uh, there's an opportunity to do so, and they have been they have been willing in past classes to do that. Um, it's a good year to not have a lot of scholarships to fill because you don't have April. Uh, you don't know what you're going to have from an evaluation perspective, but also because Purdue has been in on all of these guys in, 20, in 2021 for so long. And you probably, if you follow recruiting, you already know all the names. Uh, Purdue's already got Caleb first committed. So you got you, ha you have two spots to fill, basically, probably three spots to fill. But on paper, two, you already have one of them filled. So that's 50% of your class for all you math majors out there are already accounted for. Um, obviously Trey Kaufman is a player Purdue's been in on for an awful long time, has been in a very good position with. It was easy to kind of presume that when Purdue got Caleb first, that that was probably it for Trey Kaufman. I don't know if that's necessarily reality. Purdue's continuing to recruit him. 
um, whether or not having a player already of a similar positional profile is a deterrent for him. That's that's kind of the million dollar question there. Um, but Purdue's been in on him forever. Max Christie, the five star guard from Chicago, again another guy who uh, Purdue's been in on for years. Uh, Blake Wesley up in South Bend, a, a guy Purdue's been in on for a very very long time. Uh, obviously the the prob probably the name top of mind for most people has been Harrison Ingram, the five star from Dallas, who officially visited a couple weeks ago. I think Purdue's in a really good spot there. I have an update on him on goldenblack.com right now. Um, I don't know if it really affects him at all. Uh, Purdue did a really good job with the official visit, has done a really good job recruiting him, period. I think they're right there for him. Uh, how long he's going to wait before he makes a decision, obviously it's still early in the process, but I think he's moving along pretty nicely. He specifically said that the April evaluation period not happening doesn't matter to him because he's in part because he's good with the offers he has now, which seems like a pretty uh, a pretty positive sign for the teams who are in on the ground floor with him, Purdue being one of them and Purdue being one of the teams that most recently hosted him for a visit. I think Purdue's a real player for him. Uh, how long that's going to take for him to reach a decision one way or another, I have no idea. Uh, but Purdue's been on, on him forever. They've already had him on campus. It's not like they had to go out trying to find him this spring or something like that. I still think Luke Goody is an offer po possibility for Purdue. Um, the shooting guard up in Fort Wayne, Purdue. If Purdue doesn't know everything it needs to know by now about Luke Goody, then I don't know what it's been doing, uh, but it does. And um, it wouldn't surprise me at all if Purdue came in uh, with an offer at some point in time. Now, whether Purdue can still get him when it's the 12th or 13th offer as opposed to the first or second, I don't know. Caleb first would really help them there because th those two are really good friends. Uh, I do think Luke Goody really likes Purdue. Uh, we'll see what happens there if Purdue does offer him. Um, kind of moving on to football, how can this potentially help? Oh, uh, one of those small points to make about basketball. The junior year official visits have been enormous uh, for Purdue. Purdue has had Kaufman, Caleb First, Harrison Ingram, um, and Blake Wesley all on campus ready for official visits. And when you look at what happened last year when Purdue had Jaden Ivey and Ethan Morton make junior year official visits, uh, Hunter Dickinson and a couple other guys did as well. Purdue got Ethan Morton and Jaden Ivey earlier than anybody expected this time of year. Um, basically, a, almost probably a month from today, basically, is when those guys fell into place for Purdue. And uh, the one thing about the basketball calendar now, without this April period happening, more and more guys are deciding in the spring. You wonder if Purdue might not be on, uh, on the verge of having the same sort of spring now as it did last year, in which case that would be really good news because Jaden Ivey and Ethan Morton last year are, are absolute studs. The two guards Purdue wanted, a best case scenario, kind of start the last year's class, largely in, attributable to the fact that these junior year official visits now are giving schools an opportunity to get these guys on their campuses for that really in-depth visit. Purdue always does a pretty good job with its visits, and um, if history repeats itself there, uh, perhaps Purdue does get a second commitment before um, the traditional spring evaluation period would even happen. I'm only speculating there. Um, based on last year's precedent, but I don't know what's different about this year as opposed to last year. Obviously, every individual year is different. Every individual kid is different, so predicting what's going to happen now based off what happened before uh, is probably a bit of a fool's endeavor, but I'm just mentioning it uh, to keep the possibility uh, top of mind here. Kind of moving on to football. Can Purdue benefit from this? Probably. Uh, Purdue does a really good job getting young guys on campus for unofficial visits and then getting them back for more unofficial visits. Purdue has done an unbelievable job the last few years getting really good players to games. Uh, it wasn't all that long ago that, you know, Purdue really had a hard time getting really good players to visit. And now it, it's transformed under Jeff Brom and his, and his staff and his recruiting office people. Um, Purdue does a great job getting guys on campus, getting them on campus multiple times. In a situation like this where guys might be wondering what's going on, they might gravitate toward more toward what they know and who was there from day one. And in a lot of cases, on really good players, Purdue's going to be one of those schools. Um, so I think Purdue can benefit for that reason. I think Purdue can benefit also because the state of Indiana happens to be loaded uh, this year with Big Ten caliber prospects. Purdue has obviously done a pretty good job in Ohio, done a pretty good job in Detroit, all driving distance type stuff. I think the schools that can be hurt by this potentially are the schools that are hard to get to, the Nebraskas, the Oregons, 
whatever it may be. Um, but the schools who were, are within driving distance of a lot of players who've had those players on their campuses often, I think, um, can can benefit from this a little bit. So we'll see if that actually happens. I think Purdue is in a pretty good spot to do a pretty decent job getting its share of talent out of this really, really good, really, really deep year in the state of Indiana. Donovan McCulley is a real possibility. Yanni Karloftis, I'd call a likelihood more than I would a possibility. Uh, producing a great spot with offensive lineman Josh Sales from Brownsburg and offensive lineman Zach Richards from Mooresville. Purdue already has two in-state commitments in wide receiver Preston Terrell from Brownsburg and Jalen Allstott Van Devanter from Mooresville. Um, I'm getting really good at saying that name and remembering what it is. So Jalen Allstott Van Devanter, Jalen Allstott Van Devanter. I keep wanting to say Van Demeter because that kid who plays for the Reds, uh, Josh Van Demeter, whatever his name is. Um, but I'm finally getting that name down. Uh, I'll be talking about it a lot probably for the rest of the year. Um, and whatever else, whatever other recruits Purdue gets in basketball and football, we'll see what impact this all has. But it, it is very possible Purdue can benefit both sports from this, you know, very, very unfortunate, very, very unprecedented uh, situation we are all living through here. So those are kind of my thoughts for the day on Purdue recruiting. It's my intent to keep these things under 15 minutes because we've been getting a little obnoxious. Uh, the first two days, I think we went like 25 and 22 minutes, which is just insufferable. I don't know how you people listen to me for that long. I just go on and on and on and I'm so monotonous and I don't change the tone of my voice very often, but I do appreciate you all, despite the insufferable nature of my presentation, uh, for tuning in, for listening in, for watching whatever, whatever platform you might be, um, you might be processing this off of. That said, those are the thoughts for today for our third uh, goldenblack.com daily quarantine simulcast. Um, once again, brought to you by our sponsors, Purdue Federal Credit Union, uh, Fouts Purdue Bookstores, the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant, First Source Bank, East End Grill, and the Charters Team Remax Ability Plus. want to remind you once again, Sixth Street Dive in Lafayette is open for carryout orders, as are our friends at Arnie's and Bruno's. If you're looking for something to eat tonight and you're, you are local and you're considering takeout, want to support our local businesses, whatever it may be, please keep them in mind. The Sixth Street Dive, Arnie's and Bruno's. So uh, we'll talk to you again probably sometime next week. I don't know if I'm going to do this on weekends because you don't want to see the weekend version of me. This is the first day I've worn a collared shirt uh, since the day I was getting ready to go in the car to drive to Indianapolis for the game that never happened. Uh, ever since then, it's it's been basketball shorts and, and hooded sweatshirts and, and all the like. I finally shaved today for the first time in like a week. Uh, so this is kind of my life. This is kind of all our lives right now, but hopefully we can all kind of get through it together. Uh, that's what we're doing this for, to try to help you guys pass the time, to try to entertain you when there's not a whole lot going on. So once again, we appreciate you watching, listening, whatever it may be. Everyone, please take care of yourselves. Thank you.